Today, I am joined by Aussie striker Harry Sawyer, who plays for Indian Super League club Jamshed Poor. Thank you so much for joining me today, Harry. No worries at all. Thanks for having me on here. So my first question is always a pretty easy one, and it just, where did your love and passion for football first begin? Um, it would have been probably just in the park across the road. Um, my older brother, he he played football. Um, so growing up, he he was always going out to play play at his local club, and then when uh on the weekends, I would always just play across the road in the park with him and sort of just do like one on ones with him and and play little penalty shootouts. And I just started falling in love for the the game there. Um, and then when I was five years old, went. To- down to my local club Newmarket in in Brisbane, um, and just started started playing from a young age. And I know in Australia we're pretty spoiled for choice with sports. You know, there's rugby league, cricket, AFL, pretty much everything. Football's sort of a bit lower on the list. So, as a kid, did you have any you know football idols or heroes that you watched on the TV growing up, or was it just general sports heroes like Shane Warne and you know Darren Lockyer and stuff? Yeah, to be honest, for me, my dad played rugby union. Um, and even at, at school, I played rugby league as well. Um, Football-wise, I loved watching Tim Cahill and Mark Viduka. Um, but that was probably when I got a little bit older, when I started kind of choosing football more more over rugby. Or I actually enjoyed playing rugby more as a, as a kid in school and, and sometimes across the road in the park. I didn't always just play football. Um, so I would even look up to rugby league players or, or rugby union players as well at the same time. But then when I started um kind of falling in love with football a bit more, that's when I started watching the likes of Viduka and Cahill and when I was kind of narrowing down on one sport. But as, as a youngster, I enjoyed rugby league and rugby union as well. So as a kid, I think every sort of kid has this dream that we want to be a professional athlete, whether or not it's like a, you know, vet, supercar driver, footballer, what have you. But for you, when was that moment when you thought, you know, this is something I want to do and I'm going to give it a serious crack? Probably not. It wouldn't have been early early on in in my footballing kind of journey, I suppose. When I was younger, I just played for fun. Um, and as I said, I liked rugby as well and liked a lot of sports, just enjoyed sports in general. Probably not until I was, to be honest, I was kind of rubbish as a kid. I wasn't that good of a player at all. Um, and then when I hit sort of 15, 16, I started then playing men's senior football. And then you start getting paid a little bit, a little bit of pocket money. And then probably when I was 16, when I started playing in the um, in the MPL in Queensland, that's when I was like, oh, maybe I can make something of it. So that's when I sort of put my head down more. In high school, I was in a, in a football program. Um, so that gave me a lot of training, but it wasn't kind of a, a hit to me that oh I can I can do this I can maybe play for a living until I was maybe 16 17 and I know what it's like being quite young and going into men's football I think I was 15 when I first got called up playing against full-grown blokes and to be honest I thought I was pretty good as a kid but then when I got in the blokes game I got bullied off the ball I found it really hard it was a difficult transition was that the same for you because you were quite young when you started breaking into NPL did you struggle at all or were you kind of more natural, you know, playing with the men? Um, I think physically it was a, probably not the most daunting thing for me. Um, being a little bit bigger, physicality wasn't the, the harder thing for me. Um, when I was around that age of, you know, 14, 15, 16, that's when all, all the all my mates at school, the good players were going to like the academies and then going to the, you know, youth league teams, you know, like Brisbane Royal Youth or uh, whichever A-League club it might be. Whereas for me, my journey was a little bit different where I wasn't really good enough to be in the academies, the Queensland Academy of Sport or in the youth team set up from an earlier age. So that's why I started playing men's football when I was like 15, 16. Um, But to be honest, I think that's probably the best thing that I could have done because you get more more games and in in a physical league with men that makes you develop a lot quicker than kind of training with boys so in a way it was a blessing um but yeah physically it wasn't so much of a of a task it was more just playing with better players I think and you eventually did end up in Brisbane Royals sort of like academy NPL setup 
when you first got approached by them, knowing that this is a full professional club, I know you said you got a bit of pocket money playing like NPL, but this is mm. a stepping stone into full professional football. Was that a difficult decision for you to, you know, accept it and fully commit to this, or were you just pumped up and ready to go? No, nah, for me, I was, I was, I was pumped when I got the opportunity to go, go in full time. Um, I was playing in the MPL Queensland uh, at the time, my first season in the MPL before I got picked up by the Raw Youth. Um, so as soon as I kind of came in for training and realised I could have a position in the in the youth team at Brisbane Raw, I was I jumped at it. I, I didn't think twice. Um, that's kind of at that at that stage, I was already thinking maybe I can go pro with this. So that's what I wanted to do for sure. Didn't think twice. And going into those professional setups, you know, with the high professional standards and it's pretty much full time now as opposed to, you know, MPL, which is sort of part time. How difficult was that step up to fully commit yourself to fully do the weeks, the training, just everything about this professional setup? What what was the most difficult thing for you? Probably the most difficult was because, as I said, I didn't go through the the ranks when I was younger. I At the time, I started working in a cafe and and working at a restaurant while I was playing in the MPL and then studying as well at university. So when I did leave school and the year after get picked up by the Royal Youth, I had a few things on my plate already. Um, so kind of initially it was a little bit of a, a juggling kind of act of, okay, now I need to focus more more on this because at the time I was playing MPL where you tr- train, you know, two or three times a week and then play on the weekend and I had a job. I'd work at a cafe on a Saturday morning and then play on a Saturday evening. Whereas then going into the full-time pro environment, it's just football. Um, and even even as a youth team player, the money's not great. So you have to make sacrifices. But I just I, I chose to go into the full-time environment with Prison Rural Youth and then also do my studies at university. So um, I suppose the bank account started to take a little bit of a hit, but um, it was worth it being in a full-time environment. And then it wasn't long before actually another A League club had interest in you, which was the Jets. You ended up moving to Newcastle, which I know a lot of people who move from, you know, Queensland and stuff to New South Wales say it's a bit to get used to. Was that difficult for you when you got the offer from Newcastle Jets to pack up your whole life and move to a different state? Or were you excited for the opportunity? Um, actually it, it's uh how it happened is uh, when I was in the youth team. I felt like I was kind of a, was in a in a moment where I had a lot of people in front of me, a lot of good strikers in front of me in the in the first team. You had Jamie McLaren, who's the top goal scorer of the A League. Can't get ahead of him. We had Nick D'Agostino, who's now Melbourne Victory. He was there. Uh, they had a, we had another good striker, Joey Katabian, um, who's now playing in Melbourne. But at, and at the time, I thought my opportunities are a little bit limited, and I, I got a a chance to go down to Newcastle Jets and initially just trial so it, it was pretty much i had to decide am i getting stagnated here in brisbane i've got an o- offer to go down and trial and show what i've got in newcastle and i chose to do that and i played one youth league game in newcastle against sydney fc um on trial and scored a hat trick so then after that um got an offer and then the the week after played played in my league debut so it was a really good move for me personally and for my development, one that paid off, but at the time it was a huge risk. So I kind of threw all my eggs in one basket moving down there, um, not having a contract uh, offered. I had to pack up um, in Brisbane and just throw throw everything I had at it. Um, and luckily it paid off. And as you said, you did make your A-League debut. You played a couple of times for the Jets. But for that first match, the first time you step on the pitch as a professional footballer, what do you remember about that match? And personally, how do you think you went during it? Uh, so we played, we were playing away to Western Sydney Wanderers. Um, and at the time, their, their crowd and their fan base was, was really vocal, huge. Um, we played in a smaller stadium in Campbelltown. And I came, I came on when we were 2-0 down. But the I just rem, remember the atmosphere was, was awesome. And uh, the opposition fans were just, you know, going crazy and, it was definitely a, something I hadn't experienced before, so it was a, a really nice way to kick off my professional career. Even though we didn't get didn't get a good result, and and that season, to be honest, uh, the Newcastle Jets we struggled, um, but still an awesome experience for me and one that I wouldn't forget. 
And it is quite difficult breaking into professional football. There's not a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of very good players. So for you, having got a taste of professional football so quickly after joining the Jets and then getting limited opportunities afterwards, how frustrating was that for you and how hard was it mentally to sort of deal with that? Yeah, it's really frustrating. I suppose as a striker as well, in A-League clubs, they've all got a foreign striker and it's hard to kind of break in and... um find your way as a, as a younger striker in the league. So, I mean, there's always setbacks and, and, and little opportunities that you get and you just kind of have to fight your way through it to try and try and take an opportunity when it comes. And um, you spoke about foreign strikers. I think that season at the Jets, if I'm not mistaken, you had Alexander Coco and Martin Nordstrand, who were quite experienced, but to be honest, they didn't really do too well at the Newcastle Jets. So, what were they like with you knowing that you're a you know young striker coming through? Were you able to get good advice off them or was it kind of like them being a bit standoffish towards you knowing that they're not performing well, there's expectations and you're here to take their place? Um, to be honest, in, in terms of those two strikers, Nordstrand and, and Coco, they were actually re- really good guys. Um, Coco was not, he wasn't standoffish or he didn't, wasn't like threatened and tried to kind of, you know, uh, point his nose off at me or anything like that. He was actually quite welcoming and would give me good advice and I'd try and learn things off him being kind of a bigger striker as well. And Nordstrand at the time was playing kind of two roles. He would sometimes play as a nine and then sometimes as an attacking midfielder. And because we were struggling a bit, I suppose everyone was trying to focus on their own game. It wasn't really at the, at the time they weren't trying to, freeze me out or anything like that they they were welcoming and yeah it wasn't it wasn't a bad experience with them and then you did leave the jets to go back to mpl for a little bit but then you made your first move into asia in the philippines and to be honest i think you got golden boot or something only playing half a season you absolutely took the piss in that league by the looks of it what was that like going to Philippines? How did that move come about? And what was it about that league that sort of brought the best out of you? Yeah, um, in hindsight, probably probably after when my contract was coming to an end at Newcastle, I, I didn't have as much patient, patience as I should have. Um, as a young player, I maybe didn't take advice that, that might have helped me. I, I jumped straight back into playing games, um, went back to Queensland and without kind of looking at an next professional offer, I just thought oh, I'll, I'll go back home and and play some games. So in hindsight, maybe it would have been better to to wait out for another pro offer or wait for the next season to come in instead of in the break going and playing games. But in the MPL, I did well, um, scored a heap of goals in a, in a short period of time and then had an offer in Asia. So when I had that pro offer, I thought, oh, why not? I'll take it. It'll be a new experience and take me out of my comfort zone. I was only 20 years old. Um, thought I, I'd have a chance at playing a lot of games in a professional league. So I went over there with an Aussie coach, Gary Phillips. Um, the club wasn't doing so well. They're, they're a new club uh, with uh, a new owner who part owns Western Sydney Wanderers. Um, so it was a very new team, but they were struggling at the time. But um, fortunately for me, I've, I've kind of hit the ground running when I got there and scored a lot of goals in, in the back half of the season when I went because it was mid-season transfer window. Um, so it was a good experience all in all, really, and and played plenty of games. And you also had a loan in Taipo in Hong Kong where you also did very good. So coming off the back of a golden boot and then doing well in another Asian league, were you a bit disappointed that when you come back to Australia, you had to play NPL again and you didn't get an A-league deal? Or was that always your goal to come back, play NPL? Um, yeah, so the, the move to Taipo was a good one. They, they were playing in the AFC Cup. So that was when they approached the club and were interested in signing me. I, I thought, yeah, it's a step, you know, another step in the right direction playing in the AFC Cup. And and um, we ended up winning the league in Hong Kong. So it was a really good experience um, playing in a, in a uh, probably a better league than the Philippines was. Um, and I played regular games. So that that was a good experience in itself, but yeah, at the end of at the end of the season, we ended up winning winning the league, and then an, um, in Hong Kong there was riots, and in the off season, and and the owners of the club at the time left the club. So since then, the club actually 
self relegated because all the money left when the own ownership team left the squad. Um, and there wasn't really, a, I, I didn't feel a, a passion or desire to stay in Hong Kong at that time. So I came back to Australia and was hoping I would pick up an A league deal or something, but unfortunately I didn't. Um, I trained with Sydney for about a month. Um, that would have been around August, September, uh, before the season started and trying to get my fitness and show what I can do. And, um, didn't get a deal there, but then had an offer from South Melbourne, uh, in the MPL and, and, uh, thankfully signed there because it was a really good time, really good experience there. And I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, it was a good club. And we all know how historic South Melbourne is and how passionate and big their fan base are. But when you really played there, did you get a sense of that beforehand or was it a lot bigger than what you expected? Because I know some players I've spoken to have played for South Melbourne, you know, in the NPL, they say they didn't realise how big and passionate the fan base still was until they actually played there. So was it similar for you? Maybe not so much because I, I had a couple of mates that had played at South Melbourne. Um, Jesse Daly, who uh, just left Brisbane Raw and is now in Canada, he he kind of uh, was telling me about the club before I signed there and before I flew to Melbourne to, to meet um, with the director of the club. But he, he explained everything to me and, and it kind of hit the mark when I started playing for them. It's, it's a really good atmosphere. They've got passionate fans for, for the MPL um, and uh, pro probably one of the, the best clubs in the NPL that you could play for in terms of the professionalism and the setup there um, is second to none really. So it was, it was an awesome experience to play in a club like that in, in the NPL level. Um, but yeah, when, when you're doing well, the, the fans there, they're, they're great for you. After playing for South Melbourne and doing well, you went to Gold Coast and you did well. And now you're where you are now. You're in India with Jamshed Paul. Um, how did that move come about? And was there anything about India that was a lot different to what you're expecting? I know a lot of players I've spoken to who go to India say they didn't expect the fans to be so passionate and crazy. So what was your experience like? Yeah, so I uh, had the offer from uh, Jam Shippur in the Indian League around July, August time um, while I was playing at South Melbourne. Uh, it was a tough one because we were doing so well um, in, in the league. We were at the top of the league and coming into finals. Um, but obviously, when, when you get an offer in the Indian Super League from the NPL, it's not something you can turn down. And um, arriving in India, yeah, it's, it's a huge culture shock. Um, Jamshed was a, a small kind of city in India, so it's not like being in a Goa or a Mumbai, um, not so international like, like those areas. But the fans here are, are really good. They're, every home game, you know, you can play up. Um, our first home game, we sold out the stadium. We played in front of 20,000. And some of the matches you play in Kerala, you can play in front of 50,000 people and the fans are crazy. So I wasn't expecting that many fans and how much interest there is in the game. It's really well covered um, from a media perspective. Uh, and it kind of brings a good vibe about about the whole league. So it's it's a fun league to play in for sure. Um, living in India, that's, that's a whole other story. It's very, it's a big uh, culture shift and shock from Australia from the comforts of Melbourne, but um, it's just all, all for the experience and it's um, enjoying it so far. You mentioned playing in front of, you know, 50,000 people in Kerala and stuff like that, going from NPL where you're playing in front of a few thousand to these big stadiums. How do you mentally prepare yourself for these big games? Do you have any pre-match rituals or anything like that? Or do you just kind of go out in the stadium and just do your thing? Not so, not really any pre-match rituals. Um, when I was back in Melbourne with with my partner Nina, we would just take the dog out for a walk, go for a coffee or something on game day, and I try to do something similar here. We we have a coffee here, um, try and take the dog for a walk, kind of keep my mind off the game. Um, have lunch together, and then yeah, it's not not so much. I don't have any rituals. I just try and try and do what I would usually do on any kind of other day. Um, don't do anything crazy or anything special. And you're a goal scorer, you're a striker, you play up front. But playing in India, it took you a little while to, you know, sort of get off the mark with your first goal. I know you got a couple of assists and you were playing pretty well, but you just couldn't find the back of the net. Now, being a foreign striker, of course, there's a lot more pressure on you. So when you finally did score your first goal the other day, 
just what a relief was that for you and can you talk us through that goal at all yeah it's it's um as a striker if you go through a patch of not scoring goals it's stressful and it's annoying because it's the best feeling and it's all you want to do really as a striker um being in india the foreign rule is it, it makes it hard for in terms of game time because you can only have um you know six players six foreign players in the squad and four on the field so in a match, you can only swap one foreign player for another foreign player. So your your minutes as a striker, if you've got another striker that's performing, it can be limited. So it's a bit hard to find rhythm in that in that sense. Whereas before in Australia, I was kind of playing ninety minutes every game. As a striker, it's hard when you're playing bits here and there and getting some minutes one week and not so much the other. But no striker likes to go to games without scoring a goal. So when when I scored the first goal. It was a, yeah, it was a really good feeling, um, especially to, to win the game from coming behind. Um, in the end, it was awesome. And for you personally, we've just started twenty twenty three. It still feels to a lot of us like it's still twenty twenty. But what are your personal goals for the rest of twenty twenty three? And what can we expect to see from Harrison Sawyer? Um. First and foremost, from a football perspective, try and finish off the season here strong. Um, we've got uh, Asian Champions League qualifier, I believe, um, at the end of the season. That hasn't been confirmed, but um, because James Sheppard won the league last season, uh, we have a slot to compete for in the Asian Champions League. So that would be something uh, I really would enjoy doing. Playing in the Asian Champions League would be a, a massive kind of bucket list tick in, in the Asian football world. Um, and other than that, with the season coming to an end, uh, I've, I've got my girlfriend Nina here and our dog and try and try and experience new things in the off season and, um, finish, finish this season on, on a strong note, try and score some goals, get a few more assists, try and maybe sneak into the playoffs if we can. Um, but yeah, that kind of th those are the three main things we've got the champions league to, to look forward to, um, try and experience a new life here in India and, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to what 2023 will bring. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Harrison. It's been an absolute pleasure and I wish you all the best for the rest of the season. No worries. Thanks a lot. I appreciate the time and, and um, taking the time this morning to chat with me.